It is said that the tree of life is the working flow of intelligent creative light consciousness through all layers of the soul, body and spirit upon the earth. Therefore, learning the tree of life is like learning the anatomy and physiology of the soul. As above, so below. What is within the body of man is a reflection of the workings of the body of the universe. This includes the relationships between all body parts and the way they function as a whole. In the cosmic creation of Tsimtsum, when the divine being, Ayan Sof, threaded the ray of light into the spherical vacuum, this ray of light that came from his unity was held in place by his chokma and Bina, his wisdom and understanding. Thus the thread which contained the genetic blueprint for the evolutionary unfolding of the universe and all life and beings within it, was made of the seven lower sephirot suspended beneath the supernal sephirot in a line. Hashem poured his light from the unmanifest universe into the thread and it exploded. This was the Big Bang that begun the universe, the first great orgasm. After the Divine Being had inserted the light of His Being into the Sephirot, they gained the ability to give as well as receive. And they reorganized into the construct known as the Tree of Life with 22 joining paths that were signified by the Hebrew letters. Thus they are the lines of creation and formation through which giving and receiving takes place. The Hebrew letters are the component forces through which the universe was made. The sounds or frequencies of the Word of God in creation. They are the divine language that uttered creation and all things in the universe into being by their names. These letters represent like the forces in physics that are also symbolized by letters, the component elements of the layers and interacting relationships of all things in the universe. Path working is the ability to isolate one's conscious awareness through these creative forces that are signified by the Hebrew letters to define and refine the soul, its functioning and expression. Thus, path working is the act of tikkunim, corrections or rectifications inner adjustments for soulful development. All systems can then be defined as a whole by their component parts signified by the paths. The tree of life is like a pigeonholing system for all systems, from the anatomy of the body to the forces in astronomy to the creative patterns in human history or the elements of any science. Hermetic Kabbalah expanded the meaning of the Hebrew letters with the symbolic pictures encompassed by the tarot. 
the transformational processes encompassed within alchemy, the forces encompassed by astrology, and stages of initiation encompassed by the many magical systems of ancient civilizations like the Egyptians and Greeks in their mystery schools. These systems developed over time into the sciences, though many sciences have now lost the holism of their entirety from the original alchemical system that they emerged from. Thus, most sciences omit the soul and consciousness as elemental factors in creation and experimentation. Let us then look at the paths on the tree of life and their characteristic traits. Aleph. Aleph is an unpronounced consonant like H in the word air. Its pronunciation is delineated by the accents placed upon it and it is the first letter of the alphabet like Alpha in Greek. Aleph means ox. The ox is the beast of burden who lightened the working load for humanity by pulling the plough that tilled the earth, allowing crops to be planted. It is the symbol of progression, of harnessing forces to make our journey lighter. This motion from the light is the primary motion with which God created the universe and that initial spark that started its momentum and expansion. On the tree it is the transition between one and two, Keter and Chokmah, creation from his unity to the duality of an endlessly dividing universe. Thus, the ox, although it has the force of maleness, has the lunar shape in its horns. The sun disk in the lunar horns was the symbol of male force and female form united. From this union, spirit is born. The spirit that causes all things to progress, from the creation of the universe to the patterns of human history. Thus, the universe bears the yoke of God's divinity by giving his creation's placement. It is the spirit of a thing given a name and a motion. It is the serpent emerging from the egg. It is the tarot card of the fool setting out on a journey, not knowing where each step may lead him wrought with perils and adventures, following the journey upon which his natural inclinations lead him. Aleph is the air sign planet, known as the king over the breath of life. It is two yods connected by a valve, representing the hidden and revealed aspects of God's unity, connected by the valve the Torah or universal teachings. It is the symbol for the middle pillar on the tree of life. It is the breath of the divine being in motion, expanding consciousness. It is the awareness carried within the stream of endless flow in creation. This free-flowing air of consciousness moves through stages and phases of initiation like the stages of growth in the cycles of life. It is the planet Uranus as the sky god, the god of the vault of the air, the father of the titans. Thus Aleph, Alpha, the initial inspiration is the conscious experience along the journey and the spirit of creation.
Beit. Beit is pronounced as a B or a V. It means house. It is called in Greek beta. As a prefix before a word in Hebrew, it means in, at, or with. If Aleph is the free flowing spirit, then Beit is the beginning of the spirit taking form, thus finding a house, embodiment, or temple, so to speak. This is why the first letter of the Torah starts with a Beit and not an Aleph. Bereshit bara, in the beginning. It is the number two signifying the two parts of Torah, written and spoken. The ability to recognize the placement of a spirit in its form is the skill of the magician. God is the formless form, but all things in creation find their form in how and in what they are housed. The magician works consciousness within all things in the universe as it comes to know them. The magician is the mind that taps into the universal mind through all things in creation. Such mindful awareness is attributed to the planet Mercury. The mentality of the magician is through sorcery, tracing the origin of all things through their form and makeup and their alchemical influence into the universe. The magician is the conscious creator who, like the divine being, creates a house, a temple, a place and atmosphere to contain a spirit. Indeed, the Hebrew letters themselves are houses for the forces of divine creation. It is the hermetic principle of isolating consciousness upon anything for learning of the knowledge that it contains and coming to work with it. Beit, Mercury, is the conscious being in its meditative state, housed by thought and contemplation to behold form, dichotomies, and to procure the state of understanding, Binna. Gimal. Gimal is pronounced G. Its meaning is camel, a creature that can travel out into the mystery of the open desert with no food or water, with nothing but its own self-awareness, which brings it closer to God. Mystics, Sufis, Essenes and others would wander in the desert alone to purify and commune with God. Its planetary alignment is the moon, the essence of the imagination and creative ebb and flow. Its placement on the tree is from Tiferet to Keter. Thus, it is the presence of consciousness, the harmony through unity the radiance of oneness. Its path on the upper central pillar means it incorporates all six sefirot into its imagined perspective. The mystical ability to imagine creation from Ein Sof includes the presence of all conflicts and challenges, mercies and benevolent benedictions, potent events and their timing, and the conscious meaning of all these in perspective. Its equivalent tarot is the High Priestess. Thus, the mystic takes a practical function in guiding humanity through divination and insight into the patterns of creation 
and the lines of destiny. It is the Shekhinah who arises from the heart towards the divine perspective. It is the goddess Psyche who rises with Eros into Olympus personifying self-love. It is the mystery of the resurrection of Christ passing into heaven, of all the prophets rising on white horses to transfigure into archangels. In the mystery of the high priestess is the process of transformation through self-awareness and the imminence of the Holy Spirit within this conscious awareness that is embodied within the flesh. Dalet. Dalet is pronounced as a D and is delta in Greek. Its meaning is door, the portal through which one must pass to get from one place to another. Thus it is the door between the human and divine world, the portal through which one receives vision from their silent receptive space, the door through which one's soul passes towards the divine being and through which the Holy Spirit descends into the heart. It is the tarot card of the Empress who is the living countenance of the land or a time. She is the countenance or personification of a place or an era. In being such a potent and benevolent force, she grants access from one place to another. She is the Shekhinah who grants passage into Eden and grants the soul progressive movement to attainment of the promised land, that ultimate utopian dream and goal that all souls seek to attain to. Thus the journey of life is the passing through many doors, each leading to a new stratum of existence. As Venus, Aphrodite, Ishtar, she is the benevolent and powerful female patroness and personification of a place through cultural expression. Thus she is the face of things, the acceptance of feeling, and the force that gives passage to the next level of being. Hey. Hey is pronounced as an H, as in the word him, and at the end of a word, it is usually pronounced as an ah. Its meaning is window, thus a transparent aperture upon a scene and the ability to see through things towards the truth, emet. It is the fifth letter with the numerical value of five denoting the five levels of the soul. It is the tarot card of the emperor as the embodiment of these five levels in unity he has the power to decree and thus sets the benevolent path of mercies and blessings. But to move and progress, one needs to acquire such wisdom, chokmah, to rise. Thus the emperor submits between Tiferet and chokmah, the harmonic presence of the vision of God, the word, and the wheel of the calendar. It equates with the zodiacal sign of Aries, the first sign of new projects and beginnings. The motivation behind will, the allowance and permission one gives oneself and that the universe bestows. It is the warrior and the politician as one, strategic and impulsive. It is the guiding male force seen in the example of Moses and all other prophets 
who also hold a public guiding influence. Thus, their decrees provide truth to continue in any way forward. Vav. Vav is pronounced as a V, a W, or a U, as in Apsilon in Greek. Vav literally means nail, as something that is hammered in and is referred to the act of learning, that is, getting the knowledge into your head. It is associated with the word dvekut, which means adherence, adherence to Torah, to learning the great mysteries, to learning the methodologies. Vav is also the third letter in the Tetragrammaton, symbolizing the world of Yetzirah, air. Thus the passage through life is a learning curve, and what and how we learn creates the atmosphere within the soul that allows it to pass on and through situations, allowing us to graduate beyond all things and master them. As its path lies between Chokmah and Chesed, it is the bringing of order to all emerging matters, sorting them out and learning to benefit from them. The tarot card is the Hierophant, the great teacher, rabbi or guru. He not only holds dart, knowledge, but has the methodology to pass it on effectively from mouth to ear. He is the holder of Kabbalah. He is also the one who grants graduation, passage from one phase of initiation to the next. Vav is the star sign of Taurus the bull. It is the stability we gain through learning and methodology and by the systems we set up and the way we make them work for us. The tree of life is one of those great systems of learning and development. Taurus is the ability to create stability through integrating soulful systems that work in with the material world, bringing Shefa, abundance, to all levels of being. Zayin. Zayin is the letter Z in Hebrew, called Zeta in Greek. Zayin is the sword that upholds truth and cuts through the lies. As the path between Tiferet and Binah, it is the path deep within the heart of things, our inner vulnerability that we become intimate with and protect. It is the feeling and mindset behind the forefront of our emotions and reactions. Zion is the tarot card of the lovers designating the ever-present choice to uphold a loving relationship or cut it loose. Thus, decisions are a big part of how to use the sword and what we discern in life. The star sign is Gemini, the twins, identical yet different. It shows us the similarities and differences between all things, races and people. Thus it can bring forth compassion or judgment. Chet. Chet is pronounced ch from the back of the throat, similar to the Scottish word Loch. It is the letter Chi in ancient Greek. Chet means fence or divide and refers to the way we navigate and work with barriers, limitations 
and free open passage. Submitting between Bina and Gevura, it is the way one dances through life strategically to keep one's vulnerabilities safe, one's faith and trust intact. This can be tricky emotionally as it is about protecting our deep set feelings, our understanding or even our misunderstanding. It is for this reason in the zodiac that it is represented by the side-stepping crab of Cancer, claws up in defence and yet with these same claws it delicately feeds on life's little treats. It is the tarot card of the chariot which goes forth into life unhindered, guided by one's feeling and faith. In the way we develop trust and find things that helps us through all situations. Tet. Tet is pronounced as a hard T, like in hat. In ancient Greek, it was the letter theta, the sound th. Tet means serpent, gripping and sensual, yet strong and deadly. It submits between gevura and chesed, between severity and mercy, between the warrior's strength and the strength of loving kindness that overcomes fear. It is one's hidden power within and the strength to use it in a beneficial manner. Its tarot card of strength shows someone wrestling with a lion in a way that seems more like play than a fight. The star sign Leo is also about the strength, inner strength, and one's ability to utilize it in outward expression. It can also refer to one's strength to voice oneself. Yod. Yod is pronounced as an I or a Y and corresponds with the Greek letter Iota. Yod means hand. One's destiny is written in the lines upon one's hand. One's path forward is moulded by the way one has a hand in forging one's soul into life. It is an expression of will and the first letter in the Tetragrammaton that represents the will of God. Thus it is one's search for and refinement of soulful expression. By my will or thy will, for if one's will goes against the natural path that God has laid before us, we will meet with resistance. It submits between Tiferet and Chesed, and therefore the pursuit of an ever abundant flow of harmony and beauty, bringing the presence of order. It is the tarot card of the hermit who leads one along dark paths to what one seeks. It is the scholar that guides you through endless information towards answers. It is finding one's self in life or losing oneself to a place where we find those epiphanies that expand us with enlightened thoughts and expansive knowledge. As Virgo, it is the purity and delicate beauty that comes from such fulfillments and the way we come to practice with elegance our soulfully achieved disposition. It is the goddess of the harvest, Demeter. Kaf. 
kaf is pronounced as a hard k or a harsh kh from the back of the throat, even harsher than chet. It is the Greek letter kappa. Its meaning is palm of the hand upon which we hold things. It is said that we hold life in the palm of our hands, an accurate reference for kaf. It is the way we rise above life when it engages us and throws us around emotionally. Thus we may find grace and prosperity if we deal with all things delicately and compassionately. Its tarot is the wheel of fortune, which shows the tossing and churning of life's events what we give out comes back to us. What goes up must come down. But the angel that turns the wheel is focused on the center where nothing moves. It exists in a state of contentment. The ultimate lesson is how we treat life, others and ourselves and do unto others as we would have them do unto us. The planet of the path is Jupiter, the benevolent ruler, the great protector who offers us a path to prosperity and order through the chaos of life and its endless cycles. It is the great Dharma teacher, the Patsuf of learning life's lessons, lest they come back upon us again and again. Lamed. Lamed is pronounced as an L, as in the word long, like the Greek letter lambda. Its meaning in Hebrew is ox goad, the prod used to move cattle along. Thus it is the power to keep things in check and moving in the right direction. The Egyptians symbolized this by the flail and crook with which they guided civilization. It is the presence of discipline and the harmony achieved when one has the courage to get things done. It is the tarot card of justice and rules law and business. Lady Justice holds the scales and the sword and is blindfolded as she relies on her faith and her own inner insight. It is about keeping balance materially and spiritually, personally and from a humane perspective. It is also the weight of one's actions measured in consequence. It is the star sign of Libra, the scales which weigh everything up in accord for a fair exchange. It is a pragmatic path which weighs out what is fair and righteous. It also rules courting. The path submits between Gevura strength and Tiferet beauty. It is the path of elegant refinement and development towards betterment. Mem. Mem is pronounced M, as in the word man. It is the Greek letter mu. Its meaning is water. In all its elemental qualities, it gathers to take the shape of its container, to evaporate and precipitate, to cleanse and carve out creation. It is the elemental essence of creativity, which comes from sacrifice, which is why the tarot card is the hanged man, who hangs upside down to receive wisdom and gain creative power. It is the planet Neptune 
who rules the seas and creative forces of nature, its cycles and seasons, its blessings and catastrophes. Neptune is the planet of transformation. It is the conjunction of Hod, mindfulness, and Gevura, power or strength. From a strong mind, all is made possible. Nun. Nun is pronounced as an N, as in the word nut. It is the Greek letter nu. Nun means fish, in reference to the ghostly astral images that glide elegantly beneath the physical world. It is the watery style, grace or sting of motion in creation, designated by the star sign Scorpio. As the tarot card of death, it represents sudden change, death and rebirth, through all things from seasons to sickness, from relationships to jobs, from trauma to bliss. It submits between Tiferet, presence, and Netzach, emotion. It is nature's moods, her beauty and seasons, her elegant garment, and the sting of her tooth and claw. It is symbolized by the goddess Persephone, who each year with the seasons descends into the realm of the dead and returns in spring reborn. Samech is pronounced as an S and is the Greek letter Sigma. It means prop, like a post that props a tent up in its center. Thus, it is what opens out our perspective, giving a great field of vision and allowing us to see our directions and aims, goals and migrations. It is also the tarot card of temperance, a lady upon a throne with two vases pointing up and down with waters flowing between. It is our ability to temper our character, to have an even flow between the middle and lower soul, the Ruach and the Fish. This is a great healing power. Through such calm demeanor, we are able to act and perceive things from plain sight more clearly and accurately. The star sign is Sagittarius, the centaur, half man, half horse. Thus the astral and ethical world, the animus and human world, work together as one, maintaining harmony and imagination between Tiferet and Yesod. Ayin. Ayin, like Aleph, is a silent consonant that is pronounced by its vowel accent from the throat, like Nga, Nge, or Ngu. This is why it is like three Greek letters, Eta, Omega, or Omicron. It means I and refers to the singular watching, experiencing eye or the divine eye of God. By this eye, the evil inclination is thwarted, and this is why people wear evil eye talismans. Thus the eye is ever watchful for the devil. It is the eye that spots strife and trouble, and ever acts to iron out difficulties. The tarot card of the devil asserts what we bind ourselves to in this world. It is the material constraint that constricts the soul, yet allows us to live practically. 
It is the zodiac sign of Capricorn, the goat fish, which deals with the material world and its entanglements. Keeping all material obstacles and oppression under check through foresight and adjustment. It is a practical perspective. It submits between Hod and Tiferet, the mind's presence, or learning to be mindful of things, lest they cause harm or trouble. Its power is found in the innate use of talismans and amulets, which summon the helping spirit that keeps us safe and in a good place. The Hebrew letters themselves are talismans also for the divine forces of creation. Peh. Peh is pronounced as a P or an F, like pi or phi in Greek. Its meaning is mouth, for what comes out of our mouth shows what our character is comprised of. It is the path of communication and information, which breaks down the untruths and falsehoods, especially that of the ego, which falls into an awareness of the soul like the tarot card, the Tower of Destruction. It is also the planet Mars, the exciting intelligence, for information and communication destroys barriers and brings us to the truth of things. It submits between Hod and Netzach, the thoughts and feelings that inspire our communication. Tzadi. Tzadi is pronounced as tz, tz, which corresponds closest to the Greek letter psi. It means fish hook, the tool by which we draw images from the subconscious to catch the underlying things beneath the plain sight of surface reality. It is our fascination, our childlike allure to things that draws us upon our unique paths of destiny. Following the tarot card of the star, those bright glimmering things that procure our interests. It is the star sign of Aquarius the water carrier, who carries the contents of the subconscious and pours them forth to set our path into the future. It submits between Yesod, the imagination, and Netzach, our emotions, desires, and feelings. Thus, it is the way we imagine and create life to be. Kof. Kof is pronounced as a K and in some Hebrew dialects as a Q, the same sound but from further back in the throat, a letter widely used in Arabic. Its Greek equivalent is Kappa, originally Kopa. It means back of head associated with the dreamy perception of when someone talks to you from behind you. It is the emotive imagining that comes from moods. Its tarot is the moon and is called the real magic as it imagines the subliminal spirits as they motivate the corporeal world into action. It encompasses the subliminal emotions like hope, anxiety, fears and doubts, desires, feelings that taint our actions in life. It is the star sign of Pisces, the symbol of two fish chasing each other's tails, representing the spin when one engages upon one's reflection or reflects upon the innate meaning within actions. 
It is the mystique within the physical world that builds sentiment towards things. As the path between Malkut and Netzach, it is the sense of the mood of life's ebb and flow and the way we are guided through it. Resh. Resh is pronounced as R in Hebrew from the back of the throat. Its Greek equivalent is Ro. Resh means head and refers to figureheads or representations of things. It is the generalization associated with archetypes such as those in astrology and the tarot and in the world of dreams. Through comprehending generalizations, we understand the roles that things play. It is the tarot of the sun, shown as children playing naked in the garden, or Adam and Eve receiving the fruit of knowing. It is about exposure to things and how these things alchemically change us altering our perspective and therefore our sense of identity with it. It is the base knowing that sets our mind and character, but it is also our sense of exploration that exposes us to new things and brings pieces of life's riddles to the foreground. As the submission between Hod and Yesod, it is the way the mind imagines, explores, puzzles on things, and uses the head to figure things out. Shin. Shin is pronounced as sh or s, and its closest Greek letter is sigma. Shin means tooth, that which bites or presses upon, like the way the mind presses upon a subject with thought. From the way we press our mind upon all things in life, do we come to discern and act in accord. We designate whether things are appropriate or not, and thus pass judgment. From acting upon our judgments, we are deemed to rise or fall, away from or towards ourselves, from or towards the divine, and for that matter, from or towards our ancestral wisdom. Shin is associated with the primal fire of the perpetual motion of the universe, which underlies everything. It is associated with the planet Pluto as the jewels found in the underworld and the mind's intrigue that drives us on through all things light and dark. Submitting between Hod and Malkut, it is the mind's sense of things. Tav. Tav is pronounced as a soft T. Its Greek equivalent is Tau. Tav means cross, place where the four elemental worlds and four directions meet. That is, here. It refers to the tarot of the world, as we are experiencing it with our senses as it is happening. It is the planet Saturn, or its feminine, Rhea, which means flow and ease, the daughter of Gaia. She was the mother of the gods and the rich fertility of the world as it is being created. As the submission between Yesod and Malkut, it is the heightening of perception, the sensual world and the way we create ourselves in and through it. Mm -hmm. 
These are the basic triangulations of the paths of the tree of life, through which we build more and more meaning as we experience the different arcs upon creation and the layered forces which sublimate conscious experience. For us to become accomplished beings, we, through Tikkunim, must remove all blocks so that light flows unhindered along these paths, along the paths within our soul. 